For a session presented by IAG Loyalty, please welcome the Chief Commercial Officer at IAG Loyalty, Rob McDonald, in discussion with Skift President, Carolyn Kremens. faces. So Rob, 24 hours ago, you thought you were going to be sitting here. <laughs> yeah. You're here in the hot seat. I know. Um, yeah, so best laid plans, six hours of selling sunset for the Atlantic went out the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He thought you'd be relaxing. But Adam Daniels, the CEO of IAG Loyalty, unfortunately couldn't make it. Um, that darn COVID thing hit. We thought that was gone. We <laughs> thought that was gone. But so Rob, um, thank you for being here. So IAG Loyalty, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with IAG Loyalty, but they operate some of the biggest loyalty programs um, in the travel space. And uh, Avios, you're probably familiar with that. Uh, it's a loyalty currency for now, let's see, so many companies, but British Airways, you'll know, and Aer Lingus, Siberia, uh, Finnair is a new one, to yep. name a few. So um, there are so many, so many travel loyalty programs out there. Let's start with what makes IAG loyalty successful and are you different than the other type of loyalty programs that are out there? Yeah, sure. I think you're, you're right. There's a lot of loyalty programs out there, a lot of people using the loyalty lever and, and we believe that's because it's so important. And when you see travel's always had loyalty around, but now that you're seeing people in different sectors like retail, quick serve, you know, McDonald's, eBay, Asda, these massive brands coming in, that, that tells you that there's something very uh, important there. I think we stand out um, and we see that in our, in our business performance from executing well in, in three spaces. So we've been working really, really hard to improve ways for customers to collect in terms of breadth, putting in missing brands, missing spaces, and making it easier. We've then made this big move, which I think we'll, we'll touch on later, in terms of um, opening up the Avios ecosystem by uh, bringing in partners like Qatar Airways and Finnair to adopt Avios as their currency outside of the IAG group. Uh, and then thirdly, we've continued to uh, invest in better ways to reward customers, um, you know, doubling down on making sure that that is as easy as possible, because we believe that that is a critical part of the loyalty life cycle. And then lastly, I'd say that you know, our business performance is, is distinct. So in 2022, we broke all manner of records uh, and had a great year driven by customer engagement. But then in the first half of 2023, we we're already 14% ahead of that. So it's growth on growth coming from executing wealth customers. So you're seeing a tra loyalty is just like a growing business. It's and everyone's everywhere. talking about it, obviously, Peter, right before us as yeah, well. Yeah, it's okay. everywhere. And I think it's because it is such an important um, lever. It, it really is a very effective way to drive engagement. Um, other people will talk about first party data uh, better than I do. Um, but obviously, having an infrastructure like loyalty allows you to, to take the first party data that you might need for some of the other AI or other experiments that you're doing. Right. So loyalty has been around for decades. Does anyone know the first travel company that launched loyalty program? Well, I know because I went to S. Gift AI bot, and in 1979, American Airlines launched their first program. And in, in those days, it was very transactional, right? You earn points, and then you got a free flight. Yep. Um, Consumer expectations have changed. Actually, Mark Koppel's museum, the CEO of Hyatt earlier today, was talking about the world of Hyatt and how they're really, um, uh, at the core of their program, empathy is really you know, a big part of what they do. When it comes to customer expectations, are you seeing shifts in that? And if so, how do you adapt to the, the changing traveler's needs? Yeah, sure. I mean, clearly expectations continue to grow, and so they should. Um, that's a very good thing. I think you know what we hear when we talk to customers is clearly you need to uh, deliver brilliant basics uh, very well, make it very easy. But they are looking for innovation, um, and there are spaces that we've we've been looking at. Um, and I was going to touch on a few because I think they're relevant for everybody in the room. Um, the move when we. Uh, had Qatar Airways and Finnair adopt the Avios currency and take it out of our group was, was a massive opening up for customers. So we have a digital exchange, customers can freely move currency, uh, and that is an innovation that I think is in response to 
custom demand, make it flexible, make it easy, let me do what I want to do on my terms. And we're very, very confident with that. We've also, um, again, there'd be parallels for others in the room, but with subscription, uh, we've moved very quickly to innovate there. And we found that putting great value in, um, we launched Avios Booster uh, a few months ago. And in, in uh, four or five weeks, we had half a billion Avios issued. And this is from making something fun, adding elements of gamification and value, and customers respond. Uh, and then probably a little less likely, we opened a wine business. So um, it's actually it's, its first birthday this year, the Wine Flyer. And uh, that business has gone from strength to strength. And by owning that business, we can deliver better value to customers, a much better UX, CX experience. And we're seeing customers really respond. Um, fabulous brands, and it's working really, really well. And I suppose the last innovation I would point to, is it, maybe you wouldn't call it classic innovation, but you know, we've invested heavily in delivering a new rewards platform uh, with many partners in the room. So much better digital journeys for customers to um, spend points on hotels, cars, experiences, and we'll, we'll expand that further. So we're continuing to move and see where customer behavior is changing. And how do you get that customer proximity to, to understand that? OK, so um, you talked a bit about customers spending their points. And mm -hmm. I would say, um, if I asked everyone here what's the biggest friction when it comes to your loyalty programs, uh, on average, I think uh, the, the average person has about 14 loyalty programs that they engage with. Oh. Um, but you know, we earn the points, and we get very excited when we get to the next tier, and we celebrate now we're a new level and all that. But then comes that dreaded moment when it's time to redeem your points. And I don't know about you, but it's hard. It's really hard to use those points on some of the programs. Um, anyway, the ones that I have. Uh, Delta announced that they changed their program last week. I think there were a lot of medallion members who were up in arms about that. Um, so I'm just going to ask this question straight out. If you are running a loyalty program, is the idea of it that you really actually don't want us to use our points? Like, do you want us to like earn and then like go to the grave with it? Nope. A hundred percent no. Um, we have had record-breaking numbers this year. Look, I hundred percent agree with you that we have to focus manically on making it easier. There's a lot to do. We've done a lot, but there is always more to do because we can we completely believe in the loop. And if you can't use them, you will disengage. So we're very, very comfortable with growing usage and making it as easy as possible with some way to go, but we're, we're on it. Um, we did three big things in the last year in the travel space. So we doubled in 2021 the number of guaranteed seats um, on, on Iberian British Airways. So we added a, a million seats overnight on top of the millions we already had. Um, we then responded to coming out of the pandemic. There was a huge attraction for package um, tour operator holidays, particularly in the UK. Um, British Airways holidays was a gap for us, and we filled that in. But how we've done that, to use your points there, there are no restrictions. You can use it for 100% of the basket. There's no capacity constraints. And we are seeing 20% of all customers booking British Airways holidays are immediately using their points on every basket. So that's a huge leap. And then we went to um, something very innovative, which was exciting for us to have Avios only flights. So we launched those early this year. And this was to peak destinations. This was Sharm El Sheikh. This was Geneva at February half term in the UK, which is you know, highly sought after. We've added Tenerife, Nice, Barcelona. Uh, and imminently, we will have an, another wave. And those flights are, the entire plane is reserved for points use. You cannot buy a ticket on those flights. It's only for points. And then we've gone outside of travel, because we believe it should be uh, a wider play. And we've added um, some really fantastic charity options. So the BA Better World community is a very thoughtful way that we can shine the spotlight on smaller charities. Avios Solidarios in Spain with Iberia helps NGOs get people to um, places they need to go. Mm. as well as wine, nectar, eBay. So we're really comfortable widening out and encouraging use. Yeah, that's a great point. And I just wanted to touch on that for a minute on partnerships, because mm. you've been, um, the company's been aggressively knitting together partners, not only just airlines, but obviously uh, companies like Uber, I think is one of your newer ones as well. How does partnerships work? Like, do People come knocking at your door and say, we want to be part of your program. Are you doing surveys to your consumers to yeah. see what they want? Like, what's the, the it, yeah. it is both. So we're constantly talking to customers. Um, we use data points to see where they're shopping. We're filling in brands that they ask for. Um, and, and a lot of brands come to us. We've added 
uh, more partners in the last three years than probably the prior 10. But what is really pleasing for partners and brands in the room is that the adoption from customers is probably three times what it was before in terms of the speed of people getting familiar and using them. So Qatar Airways was always an option for British Airways and Iberia customers anyway, has been for years. But once we did the Avios currency link, we saw a five-fold increase in people spending points on Qatar. Q Suites is amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's happened. Uber, we added a few hundred thousand customers in the first few weeks, digitally linked their accounts to earn Avios in Uber in the UK. Uh, and we've had like four million rides in the first few months. So the, the adoption Amazing. tells us that we're getting the brands right and our brand partners really value it. Right. So loyalty, when done right, can yep. actually change uh, consumer behavior. I know we're talking a lot about the consumer side of loyalty, but um, before we finish up, let's just talk about the business case for loyalty. There are a lot of um, really great brands here in the room. Um, you guys have been doing this for a long time. What advice do you have as these companies are looking to evolve their own programs? Yeah, I mean, happy to talk because, you know, it is an incredibly compelling case. Um, it should be a conversation around the boardroom table, around the C-suite table to have a strategy and understand as much what you're going to do here. Um, we would say that it's a very scaled play. Uh, we in 2022, we delivered um, over a billion euros of external revenue into the group uh, and delivered a quarter of a billion euro profit. So it's, it's a very scaled business. You would have the metrics you'd expect in terms of share gains. We can demonstrate to partners how it's very accretive. Um, and it's a, it's a conversation that you really need to be having. And it's also extremely asset light compared to a number of your alternatives. Fantastic. Well, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for stepping in at the last minute. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, I, Adam, better watch out. So, <laughs> um, anyway, thank you for joining us. Download um, or go to uh, iogloyalty.com to get more information. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Carolyn.